Today, instead of posting sheet music or musicians performing, I'm going to tell you about a repair project that I did. I was given an old fiddle which has had many, many repairs. You can see some of them were professionally done years and years ago. And as the fiddle got more and more cracks, there are 19 of them now, uh, some of the newer repairs were just quickly done to get rid of vibrating noises. But it got to the point where the fingerboard was sinking and the top kept coming loose and it really was un unplayable. So I figured I couldn't do too much harm to it. And so I decided to take the top off and try fixing it myself. I took the top off with a warm spatula and I hadn't done anything like that before so it took me quite a while because I was very careful. Now here are the clamps that I use. It's mainly spool clamps plus some C clamps for the ends for extra depth. I used granular hide glue which is the right kind for violins. It's a little tricky to use. I needed a double boiler, there's a thermometer, and of course a glue brush, and a container for the glue. Because the glue comes in granular form, you have to soak it in cold water before you can use it. I measured it carefully according to the instructions on the package. The instructions said to use a 3 to 2 ratio, but I found this a little bit thick. I had to add a bit more water. I used a small glass container, just a baby food jar in fact. After you've mixed the glue, you have to let it soak for several hours. Maybe try this early in the day. You've got lots of time. Here are the 19 cracks in the fiddle. They're all pretty well glued together now. So I, I didn't have to worry about that. You can see the many, many patches inside. To make sure that the glue would stick well, I first scraped off and then wiped off with warm water and then sanded the edges where I was going to put the glue. There were some lumpy spots which might have been part of the problem with the top knot sticking before. Then I took a damp sponge and I sponged all around the edges about an hour before just to make sure there was no dust that would stop the glue from sticking. Also glue sticks to wood a little better if it's not too dry. Now comes the tricky part, keeping the glue at 60 degrees Celsius while you're working on your project. So I have poured some very hot water into my pot and I covered it with a Pyrex dish. The water on the bottom is just to keep the other water from cooling down too much. Then I poured more hot water into my dish. I should have picked a deeper glass dish for this so that I'd have more room for adding water later. This way of keeping the glue warm is only useful if you're doing a project that takes only a few minutes. For longer projects, you're going to need to invest in a little electric burner or something to keep the water warm. Now I added some cold water until the temperature was about 65 degrees Celsius. I had previously experimented to see that if it was 65 degrees outside the container, it would be 60 degrees inside the glue container. Then you have to wait a little while for the glue to warm up give it a bit of a stir. The more you stir it, the more it thickens and evaporates, so not too much stirring. If it's too thick, you can add warm water. Don't add cold water. That's not going to help. You might have to add more hot water to the outside bath just to make sure your glue doesn't cool down. Once you start putting glue on the surface, you've got to work quickly because if it cools down, it'll solidify and then it won't stick. Just do it as quickly as you can. You'll probably see one spot there where I put too much glue and didn't notice. <laughs> Later on, that spot, the glue squeezed out and I had to cut it off um, with a warm knife. 
and an X-Acto blade. <laughs> Try not to do that, but if, if it happens, you can get it off. If I were doing this again, I would use two brushes so that one could be sitting in the glue, keeping warm while the other one was being used, and then I could alternate them. When I was gluing the, the body, I made sure to um, start my strokes from the inside so that if there was any extra glue, it wouldn't show on the outside of the fiddle. And I don't know if that's a proper way to do it, but it seemed to make sense. I made sure to put uh, lots of glue on the little blocks at the points and at the ends. Put the top on as quickly as you can because if you take too long and the glue has set, the two parts won't stick together very well and you'll have the problem I had before. So first I clamped the ends here and that's just to keep things from slipping while I'm working on the other end. Those are not very strong clamps and they're just temporary. Now, I had previously drawn easily visible notches so that I could make sure I got the top centered. It was a little off kilter previously. Now I'm starting to use the spool clamps. They're, they're good for gluing the edges. While I'm putting those first two clamps on, I'm squeezing very firmly to keep the the top in the correct spot. Uh, it's easy to let it move while you're twisting the little clamps. I'm using another kind of clamp on the end because there's a little block under there that should be glued down and it's uh, too far from the edge for the spool clamps. And if you don't put glue on that, um, your fiddle may not keep its shape properly. Now I'm putting lots of spool clamps on. I borrowed these clamps from my friend Jim who made them himself, but you can probably buy them commercially. Once again, I'm using C clamps um, on the neck end because there's a block under there that needs to be uh, held down and it's too deep for those little spool clamps to catch it. Uh, ideally, uh, I think a, a professional would have something that would squeeze right underneath the fingerboard, but I'm doing the best I can with what I have. Right now it's getting very heavy, all those clamps. Way, way more than the fiddle. Now you need to leave those clamps on for a few hours. Um, I didn't need mine again for anything else, so I, I left them for a whole day just to make sure. I probably put the glue on a little thick, thicker than a professional would have done, so just to make sure that it was dry. So this is the first instrument that I have tried to repair other than just minor adjustments. So please don't use this video as an example of what you should do. So the next day I removed the clamps and the fiddle seems to be holding together and the cracks all seem to be stable and I'm fairly pleased with that. 
I had to uh, get rid of a few little gluey bits that a professional would not have created. So once I had the clamps all off, because I had fixed the problem with the fingerboard, now I had to um, buy a new bridge and sand it down to match the shape of the top and carve it to uh, fit the shape of the fingerboard. But I think it came out okay. And it's playable now, although it doesn't have as much tone, I'm sure, as it did before all that patchwork was put inside.